All right, so we're looking at question four. This is from section 3.1. Um, we're told that f is a differentiable function um, for all real values of x. We're also told about its y-intercept and we're also told that this blue graph here, this is a this is a graph of the derivative. So the first thing we're asked for is a sign chart. So I want to characterize um, basically where this function is negative zero and positive. So I'm going to kind of make my sign chart off to the side rather than putting it on the graph itself. But um, where do we know our graph is? Uh, let's just do this. So, so I think we're told that every division here is a half. So let's do this. I'll make a number line. And how far are we going? Let's we're going from negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. So where is the derivative equal to zero? So these are x values. I'm cataloging f prime values. Um, f prime is equal to zero at negative one. And everywhere to the left of that, the derivative is negative. Um, where else is the derivative equal to zero at positive one? Um, between those two zeros, what's true about the derivative? The derivative is positive everywhere there. And then what about to the right of x equals one? I believe the derivative is positive there as well. So I think this is a complete sign chart for this graph. Um, so construct a first derivative sign chart, identify all critical numbers of f. So where are my critical numbers? So by definition, um, my critical numbers are where the derivative is equal to zero. Um, where f is increasing and decreasing. So these are equivalent ideas. The idea that f prime is negative and f is, is decreasing. And similarly, um, uh, where f prime is positive, that's where f is increasing. So we have a decrease here, we have increase here. So let's be really specific about this. Uh, decreasing on negative two to negative one, not including negative one. And it's increasing where? On uh, negative one to one and also one to two. So why am I being careful about this? Like, why do I have this broken up? Well, because at x equals one, this function is not increasing. Um, it's increasing around it on both sides, but it's not increasing at one. Um, the last thing we're asked is where f has local extrema. So we're gonna have extrema where our derivative, our first derivative goes from negative to zero to positive or positive to zero to negative. Uh, we only have one instance here. So we have at negative one, so around x equals negative one, our derivative goes from negative to zero to positive. So because of that, we have to have a relative minimum at x equals negative one. So I think this is all the information we can gain. I mean, there's a kind of a lot we learned from just from looking at the derivative of, uh, of f, uh, looking at f prime. So next part B, on the right hand axis, sketch an approximate, approximate graph of y double prime. Maybe I will do that from my, let's do this. But bring this up a little bit. Let's actually move this instruction. All right. So part B here. On the right-hand axis, sketch the prop from the graph of Y, or sorry, of F double prime. So, Maybe to do that, we should have a sign chart uh, for F double prime. So in order to think about this, um, 
this is kind of a personal preference thing, but I'd like to think about first where the derivative is going to be equal to zero. So if I'm thinking about F double prime, which is what this graph is going to be, and I have a graph of F prime, stop connecting those. All right. I want to look at where the first derivative graph is zero. So that's going to happen wherever I have horizontal tangents. So I think here and here, I believe that's going to be um, x equals 1 and x equals, I don't know, negative 0.4 or so. So let's do a sign chart again. So negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So around, I don't know, negative, let's just round the middle, negative one half, I believe I have a place where my concavity or where, where the second root would be equal to zero. And by the same logic, I think at x equals one, the derivative is equal to zero. So now what I want to ask myself is what's happening three different places between those zeros the right of the second zero and to the left of the first zero. So let's go from left to right here. What is the function doing to the left of that first zero? It looks like the function's increasing. So it looks like f prime is increasing, which means f prime of two, or sorry, f prime of two, f double prime is positive. Uh, what about between the two zeros? That looks like my function is decreasing there. So my second derivative will be negative. And finally, to the right of x equals 1, my second derivative should be positive. So I think this is a good sign chart for f double prime. So from here, I think I can make uh, a graph. So at x equals negative 1 half, I found zeros, and it also at x equals 1, I have a 0. Um, what's happening between negative 1 half and 1? My second derivative was negative. Let's try that again. Um, from 1 onward, it looks like my second derivative is positive. And then from... So I believe I have a, a graph that looks, oh, why is that? Oh. So I think this is a good rough sketch of our, our second root. Uh, at the very least, it matches the sign chart that, that we drew. I'm trying to get something, right there we go, that's better. So I think that's a good graph for F double prime. So what is part C? Construct a second derivative sign chart for F. Um, so again, let's let's actually move all these instructions to the same slide. Well, all right, let's look at D, see if that can, yeah, let's do all these here. I'm so used to breaking up all the different bullets that I didn't think to like, whether it would make sense to break them up. That's okay. All right, so we have a sign chart here. In fact, um, there's no reason that we have to do these in order. In fact, I think to make the graph of F double prime, the sign chart was a good first step at that. Um, but now let's answer the rest of the questions that come with part C. So we have a, sec a sign chart, clearly identify where F is concave up and concave down. So I believe it's going to be concave up on what intervals? Um, base is going to be everywhere except in between. Um, the two inflection points. So it's going to be concave up on uh, negative two to negative one half union with one to two. And it's going to be concave down on uh, where? In the middle of these two zeros. So this open interval of negative one half to one, which means 
have inflection points wherever the concavity changes. So I have inflection point at x equals uh, negative one half and x equals positive one. So I think I have all the data. I have a lot of data from this, from what this graph of f looks like, just from looking at the first and second derivative. So I know where it's increasing and decreasing. I know where its critical points are. I know where its inflection points are. I know where I know what its concavity is everywhere. So that should give me a lot of data to make this this graph. So on part D, I want to sketch a possible graph. So I know that F naught is negative one half. So I know that my y intercept is here. Just give me a point. There you go. So what let's kind of work from that point. But, the right of that point and to the left of that point. So I'm going to start by going to the right of that point. What do I know is happening with the function at x equals zero? Well, I know it's increasing, um, but I know it's concave down. So I have a function that's increasing, but is increasing in a decrease uh, at a decreasing rate. So what is that going to look like? So basically, I think that's a good representation. So it's going upward, but it's starting to flatten out. It's starting to, it's decreasing. So uh, at one, my concavity is going to change, but my function is still going to be increasing. I'm also going to have a critical point at zero. So I know this thing needs to flatten. Basically, it needs to come to a horizontal tangent line at x equals 1. But what happens to the right of x equals 1? Well, my function is going to now be increasing at an increasing rate. So I have a critical point at 1. I have a horizontal tangent line at 1, but I don't have a relative maximum there or a relative minimum. Um, and I think that kind of goes along with our sign chart. Because even though we're increasing up to a zero, like up to a, a stationary point or critical point, we're not decreasing after that. So we can't have, we can't come to a minimum. So basically, I'm let's try to make this a little more drastic. Hopefully that makes it clear uh, what I'm referring to there. So I think from the y-axis to the right, I think we have a good representation here of the concavity and where this thing's increasing. And deep, or actually, it's just increasing everywhere except for x equals 1. We also know we have a, so now we can work to the left of that point. Um, so what's happening directly to the left of that point? Well, we already know that around x equals 0, we're increasing and we're concave down. So I think we still need to have like that, you know, pouring water metaphor up until this point. Okay, so now we've gone as far left as negative one half, but now what's happened at negative one half? Well, our concavity changes, and we're going to have a relative minimum at x equals one. So we're going to have to have a relative minimum there. But then what's happening there? We're going to have we're going to be concave up, but our function is going to be decreasing. So I believe we have to have something that looks like this. Stop getting my way, maybe. Yeah, trying to be exact about this is very hard. Which I'm trying to do for your benefit, even though I know. All we're asked for is a rough sketch, but I think this is, I think this captures all of our information. So now, now that we have this graph, let's look at the sign charts one at a time and make sure that we agree. So from negative two to negative one, our function is decreasing. I think that's true. From negative one to one, my function is increasing. That appears to be true. Uh, from one to two, our function is increasing. I think that's good. 
Um, we have critical points at x equals negative one. So there's a, a, a relative minimum there. And we have like a saddle point at x equals one, a place where we have a horizontal tangent line, but there's no relative extreme there. I think that's happening. So the sign, sign chart checks out, critical numbers checks out. Um, the decrease, the, these come directly from the sign chart. Uh, with a relative minimum at x equals negative one. Now, how about concavity? So we think it's concave up from negative two to one half, or sorry, negative two to negative one half. And I think that's the case. Um, and also from one to two, I think that's also the case. It looks like it's um, increasing upward. But we also believe that we're concave down from negative one half to one. So from here, to here, I think that's concave down, um, which means we have to have inflection points where those concavities change. So, um, you know, as with any of these things where you're trying to make a graph that captures a lot of different properties, there's lots of ways they might look. Yours might look different from mine, but uh, as long as it encompasses all these properties, you're going to be okay. 